Tionamu, or Greenstone, is a touchstone of identity for many Kiwis. It's been traded and treasured by Māori for centuries and carved into taonga that carry fascinating stories from the past. Like these three mere, the newest and largest is just seven years old and was carved from an especially large block of greenstone. Well, this is Tarereki Fedu Auta. This is about our connection to the South Island. It's named after uh, the old meeting house on the Bluff Marae. This is named for the words of Tamate Arikinui, who said, Tukuna te waka kia Tarereki Uta. So Tarere Fedu Uta is allowing the uh, canoe to go ashore. It's done in, in a double-handed style. And it's, it's execution time with these ones. This is too big to be, to be fighting with because gee, it's just too big. But it's used for other purposes. So a lot of people, these ones disappeared quite early. I remember trying to bring this back on in New Zealand and running into, uh, they wouldn't let me take it on the plane. I didn't want to part up with it. Well, hang on, this is not a weapon of war anymore. This is, this is a taonga for the marae. But nonetheless, the captain on the day in New Zealand, he had his day, so down in the hole with that. Almost went down with it myself. I'd rather have travelled there. The two standard sized mere the Shah Shah family have lent the museum are ceremonial, a family heirloom, and a lucky find. For me, this is one of this, this is mere of great beauty. This is Kutubamai. This is our ancestress. So of our Ngati who had up our connections but she uh, ended up her life uh, in, uh, in Riverton. And so this is, this is where my grandmother came from. So this has been, this been very special to my mind. And uh, this has seen many an occasion in our family. And this is the kokopu mere called Toyahure. You can see here the kokopu. This is the, the, the native fish that this speckle on, on, on the belly uh, resembles. You just don't get to see kokopu very much, and you don't get to see kokopu of this beauty, hardly ever. And then to find a, a mere with it on, wow. I saw this in a shop up here in Cuba Street, and I couldn't believe it was just sitting there and I reached quietly down and picked it up and never let it go until it was paid for in mine. <laughs> and uh, I knew exactly, because I'd, I'd just been appointed as um, Pro Vice-Chancellor at Victoria in the year 2000. And I thought, that's going to mark this occasion. And it's called Toyahure, which is the Māori name for, for the Māori name of my position. So that's a special tonga indeed. While a modern mere can be useful in a war of words, their elders were meant for action. A mere is a fighting weapon. It's, it's used for thrusting. This sort of patu sort of invokes more to hit, whereas mere is to, is to fly. It's, it's a much quicker and, and subtle stroke. I was brought up in the 50s where a lot of the old medes already had and were still being buried because they were weapons of war. They'd been, they'd been used to kill people. People wanted to put these to sleep and put them away. And uh, I think we were some of the first generations that stood up and said, enough of burying our cloaks and burying our, our, our medes and so on. And uh, if we do, well then let's replace them. Things have a new life and um, uh, it's up to us to bring our families and our people uh, along with us. So these, these have got a great history yet. We've already got a great history just in a short time. It's the people and the stories, the events and the places linked to each mere that give it strength. So it just goes to prove you don't have to be old to be powerful.